Welcome to DozoChem. This video covers Vesper theory, which helps predict molecular geometry or shapes of molecules. Vesper is short for valent shell electron pair repulsion theory, and the idea is that electrons are going to be arranged around the center atom in three dimensions to minimize repulsion between the electrons. Um, so for the slides that are about to happen, uh, we're going to use a notation called Vesper notation, which is shown here. And A is going to stand for the center atom. B is going to stand for the outer atoms. X tells you the number of outer atoms. E represents lone pairs. And Y tells you the number of lone pairs on the center atom. So we're not looking at the outer atoms uh, lone pairs on the outer atoms, just the center atom. So the first category of molecules have the Vesper notation AB2E0 or simply AB2 where there's two outer atoms bonded to the center and no lone pairs on the center. Uh, the shape is called linear and the bond angle will be 180 degrees. Um, so you can see this is a generic drawing of this type of molecule. Um, two atoms bonded to the center, so the best way to keep them apart, the electrons in these bonds, is to keep them 180 apart and then they'll be as far apart as possible and you will have minimized the electron repulsion. Um, so classic example of this is carbon dioxide. Here's the Lewis structure. Um, you see there's two atoms bonded to the center and no lone pairs on the carbon. Um, so it's going to be AB2. Um, so all I'll do is uh, redraw the drawing from above, but put in the real elements, carbon and oxygen. Um, when you do the sketch, you don't distinguish between single and double bonds. You just draw a line between the atoms. So even though the Lewis structure had double bonds, you would just draw a line. Um, and down below, I just repeated that the shape is linear as determined by where the atoms are. They're all in the straight line. Next example, AB3E or AB3 is a molecule with three atoms bonded to the center and no lone pairs. So the shape is called trigonal planar and the bond angle is 120 degrees. So to minimize repulsion around the center atom, you're going to put your bonds 120 degrees away from each other. That's the best you can do to keep them apart. Um, so the example we're going to do is nitrate NO3 minus. Here's the Lewis structure. You can see there's three atoms bonded to the center and the nitrogen has no lone pairs. So best way to keep them apart is 120 degrees. I redraw the drawing above, except I put in the nitrogen and oxygen atoms rather than A's and B's. And again, uh, even though there was a double bond in the Lewis structure, you don't show that in your sketch of the molecule. Um, and again, the shape is called trigonal planar. Uh, all the atoms are in the same plane, and the outer atoms are in the shape of a triangle, so you call it trigonal planar. Uh, next example, AB4E0, or simply AB4, that's four atoms bonded to the center and no lone pairs. Uh, it's called tetrahedral, and the bond angle is going to be 109.5 degrees. Um, if you were stuck in two dimensions, you could put the A in the center and the four Bs around it in a square, and that would give you a bond angle of 90 degrees, but you can actually do better than that if you go to three dimensions. Um, so the shape tetrahedral, when you see a, a bond, it's in the plane of the paper. When you see the solid triangle, that means it's coming out towards you. And when you see the dashed triangle, it means it's going backwards behind the paper. So um, hopefully you can visualize that in your head, the three-dimensional shape. Um, but imagine a pyramid with the B atoms at the corner of the pyramid and the A atoms in the dead center of the pyramid. Um, and that will give you a bond angle of 109.5, so actually better than 90 degrees, which is what you would get if you were stuck in two dimensions. So remember the goal is to minimize electron repulsion by keeping these bonds as far away from from each other as possible because electrons repel each other. So uh, the example carbon tetrachloride, you see the Lewis structure, uh, four bonds to the center, four atoms bonded to the center, no lone pairs on the carbon. 
Um, so here's the same sketch as above with carbon and chlorine just subbed in for the A's and B's and bond angle 109.5. And again, that's called tetrahedral. Um, it's called that. Hedral means faces. If you connected the chlorine atoms, uh, you would get a pyramid with four faces. Um, and that's why it's called tetrahedral, four faces. All right, next example, AB2E1. Now we're doing examples that have lone pairs. So this one's going to have two atoms bonded to the center and one lone pair. Turns out it's going to be bent and a bond angle of less than 120. So we'll explain why that is in a second. But um, if you have two atoms bonded and a lone pair, you want to keep both the bonds. So here's one, two bonds and the lone pair as far apart as possible. So you're going to keep them 120 degrees away from each other about um, to minimize electron repulsion. Um, but what's going to happen in this case is the lone pair has a slightly larger repulsive effect than the bonding pairs. So that's going to shrink the bond angle a little bit less than 120. Um, so you'll see that every time there's lone pairs, the bond angle ends up a little bit less than you would expect um, because the lone pair has a stronger repulsive effect. So uh, example here, the nitrite ion, not nitrate, but nitrite, so it's NO2 minus. Um, so here's the Lewis structure. You can see there's two oxygen atoms bonded to the center, but this time there's a lone pair. So it's AB2E. Um, here's the sketch I drew above, but with N's and O's, replacing the A's and the B's. And when you go to name the shape, the shape is determined by just the atoms not the lone pair. So you can see the N's and the O's are not in a straight line. Um, so you get a bent shape in this case. Uh, next example, AB3E. So this is a molecule with three atoms bonded to the center and one lone pair. Uh, the shape is going to be called trigonal pyramidal and the bond angle is going to end up being less than 109.5 degrees. Um, so what's going to happen is the three atoms bonded to the center and the lone pair are going to separate so that they have the largest possible bond angle, um, which is about 109.5. But the lone pair is going to repel the bonding electrons and decrease the bond angle a little bit less than 109.5. Um, so it's a tetrahedral shape, but in terms of where the electrons are, um, and the lone pair shrinks the bond angle a little bit. So. A uh, classic example of this is ammonia, NH3. You see the Lewis structure. There's three atoms bonded to the center and one lone pair. Um, so you're going to put them in the tetrahedral locations. Um, however, the shape is determined just by these atoms, not by the lone pair. So in this case, you use the word trigonal because the base of the pyramid is a triangle, the three H's. Uh, but the N is not in the same plane, so we're not going to call it trigonal planar. The N's above, so it creates a pyramid, and we call it trigonal pyramidal. Lastly, AB2E2. So we got a um, molecule with two atoms bonded to the center and two lone pairs. It's going to end up being called bent and a bond angle less than 109.5 degrees. So what you're going to do when you have two atoms and two lone pairs is put them in the tetrahedral locations. Um, however, two of them are lone pairs, so that's going to shrink the bond angle a little bit less than 109.5 degrees. So your classic example of this is water. Uh, I'm going to redraw the drawing above with hydrogens and oxygens instead of A's and B's. Um, and the shape, remember, is just determined by where the atoms are, not where the lone pairs are. So you're not going to call it tetrahedral you're going to call it bent because the atoms are not in a straight line. The H's and the O's create a bent shape. Um, so that is how we will name it. Um, so this last slide shows you a table that summarizes everything we just talked about. Um, you can see here the Vesper notation. So you draw the Lewis structure and you simply count the number of outer atoms bonded to the center and the number of lone pairs and find it on this chart. Uh, remember, it doesn't matter whether they're single or double bonds to the outer atoms. Uh, you just count it as one outer atom, whether it's bonded with a single or double. Um, and when you go to draw the sketch, you would put in real element symbols, not A's and B's in the sketches on the previous slides. 
Uh, then you can come over here and get the name of the shape and last column the bond angle but remember that the ones with lone pairs the bond angle is going to be a little less than you would think um, because the lone pairs have that extra repulsive effect.